Hi hey everyone. So we are still talking about arachnids. Can you say that again for me? Arachnids. And yesterday we drew a picture of a spider, which is an arachnid. Uh, but there's a few other animals that are arachnids too. So we have spiders. We also have scorpions. And let me show you some pictures of scorpions right now. There we go. So scorpions also have eight legs. Uh, they also have pedipalps, which are, they kind of look like the claws coming out of their cephalothorax. Uh, they do have the two body parts, cephalothorax and the abdomen. So they are very similar to spiders in many ways, but they do not have spinnerets. Uh, scorpions do not spin webs. Okay, so we have spiders, we have scorpions, and then we also have ticks and mites, which no one really wants to talk about because they're a little bit icky. So mites are microscopic. You can't even really see them. And they will live on plants or animals and feed off of them. Ticks only live on animals and they're a little bit bigger. You can see them with your eye, uh, but they also feed on uh, whatever animal they're living on. And then they can also spread disease. So they're not very pleasant to think about. And uh, there's a pretty good chance you have mites living on your body, most likely your face. You just can't see them. And really they're, they're mostly harmless. Uh, there are some that might give you a rash or make you itch. Uh, now I want to itch all over, <laughs> but you would know if you have that kind. Uh, overall, there's about 100,000 different arachnids or different species uh, that are classified as arachnids. Of that 100,000, Half of them are spiders, so different kinds of spiders. So about 50,000 different kinds of spiders. And then about 48,000, so almost half, are ticks and mites. And then only 2,000 different uh, species are scorpions. So not many scorpions, but a lot of different spiders, a lot of different ticks and mites. Um, Okay, so today we're going to compare arachnids, which are all the animals I just talked about, with insects. So you'll need a blank piece of paper and you're going to make a Venn diagram. Hopefully by now I can say Venn diagram and you know exactly what to do. Uh, I'm not even going to show you an example because we've done it so many times. Right? So two big circles. Uh, that center section. And then on one side, on one side you will write insects, which is right here. And then on the other side you'll write arachnids. And in the middle you'll write both. B O T H. So go ahead, set up your Venn diagram, and then um, pause this, and when you're ready, press play. We'll move on, okay? Go ahead, pause. I'm moving on in three, two, one. Okay. Uh-oh. Whoops. <laughs> okay arthropods. Um, this is the phylum. So there's different phylums. You'll learn about those in middle school and high school. And within that, there's different 
classes, which we've been learning about, right? Mammals, uh, insects, arachnids, birds, fish, those are all classes of animals. So within arthropods, we have the classes of insects, arachnids, crustaceans, um, and I think there's even a couple more. So arthropods would go under both. Yeah, insects and arachnids are both in the phylum of arthropods. The kingdom of animals gets really complicated. We're just touching on small parts of it this year. Okay, so go ahead and write that down in the middle. How do you go to Africa? Uh, how do you go to Africa? Yeah. Probably have to get on an airplane. Okay, next one. Okay, which one has eight legs? Arachnids. Hopefully you remember that from yesterday. Okay, moving on. Which one has six legs? Insects. Really, that's the easiest way to tell the difference between an insect and an arachnid and count the legs. Okay, moving on. Most spin webs, not all of them, but arachnids. Right, we know scorpions don't spin webs. Pretty sure ticks and mites don't either. Now I want to itch all over just thinking about those mites. Here are some spider webs. That's how they catch their food. And spiders are predators. They use their webs to catch mostly insects. Which ones lay eggs? Both. Those are insect eggs. And of course, insect eggs will look different depending on the insect. These ones look kind of like little pearls. And then that's a spider egg. It's a really big one. I'm sure it's filled with many, many, many spiders inside. Okay. Which one has three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen? Uh oh, that would be the insect. This one's a lot of writing, so you probably are going to need to pause. And then I'm going to move on in three, two, one. Okay, so if insects have three body parts, we know spiders have, or not spiders, arachnids have two body parts, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Again, you'll probably need to pause for this one. And I'll move on in three, two, one. Which one has a hard covering, like an exoskeleton? Both. There's a scorpion and a B. 
beetle. Do you know which one is the insect and which one is the arachnid? Hmm? That's right, beetle is insect, scorpion is an arachnid. Wait, sorry, I'm moving on. Pause if you need to. Okay, some have wings. Not all, but some of them do. That would be insects. These beautiful butterflies. I've been seeing some butterflies in my yard lately. They are so fun to watch. Okay, if you need more time, go ahead and pause. I'm moving on in three, two, one. Okay, which one is two and tenny? Insects. And this one has very long antennae. For some, they're shorter. Okay, moving on. Let's go to the next slide. Hey, so which one has no wings or antennae? Definitely arachnids. And here it shows scorpions, spiders, and ticks which are all in the class of arachni arachnida. They're arachnids. I'm still itchy all over now. <laughs> I was reading about mites. Ugh. I even watched some videos, but there was nothing I wanted to share with you give you nightmares. Okay, I'm gonna move on. So pause if you need more time. Which one is cold blooded? Mm, it's both. So remember that means their body temperature changes, changes with the environment. So if they're in a hot environment, their body temperature goes way up. If they're in a cold environment, goes way down. Our temperatures stay mostly the same. We are warm blooded. Okay, many are plant eaters. Hmm. Think about those spiders spinning their webs. Are they catching plants? Mm -mm. Insects. They love to eat plants. They don't just eat plants. They will eat other things, but they are plant eaters. Okay, are you ready? Finish that last word if you need to. And if you need more time, just pause. I'm gonna move on. Okay, which ones eat insects? Arachnids. 
Here are some spiders eating some poor insects. Moving on. Okay, one million different kinds. Is that insects or arachnids? Insects. There's a lot of different insects. And that's why it was one of the only invertebrate groups we originally talked about. It's such a big group. Yeah, there's so many different kinds. Here in this picture, there's a dragonfly, there's a walking stick, beetles, butterflies, wasps, bees, flies, earwigs, ants. The list goes on and on and on. A million different kinds. It's amazing. Okay, I'm going to move on. So finish writing or pause. Okay, so which one has a hundred thousand different kinds? That would be arachnids. Remember about half or 50,000 would be spiders, so different kinds of spiders. There's about 48,000 different kinds of ticks and mites, and then about 2,000 scorpions, different kinds of scorpions. There are some mites in this picture. Just remember, mites are microscopic, which means you can't really see them. Not with your eyes. If you put them under a microscope, you can see them a little better. And that's how scientists know what they would look like. Uh, but yeah, it's, you can't just look around and see them even if they are all around you. So 100,000 di different kinds. Okay, pause if you need more time. Okay, we didn't talk about this too much, but one of these uh, classes of animals has simple eyes. And that would be arachnids. That's, these are called single lens eyes. Uh, they're kind of similar to our eyes. Our eyes are sometimes called camera eyes though because they're very complex. We, what we see uh, is a much uh, more accurate picture of what's around us than what other animals see. So. A spider would see something a lot more simple, not as much color, um, just probably a little grainier. Definitely not as clear. Most animals are made to see motion, like movement. Okay. 
So arachnids have simple eyes. They can have up to eight. And I'm going to move on. Insects have compound eyes. So let me show you some more pictures. If you look really closely, you can see it's a bunch of little dots. So they can see all these different angles. And it almost looks like a mosaic for them. Right, lots of little pictures put together. Um, and again, these are really good for sensing motion or movement. And this is why uh, insects like honeybees will usually land on a moving flower, like in the wind, instead of a flower that's still. They can see the moving flower a lot better. They have a hard time seeing things that are still and not in motion. Okay, I'm gonna move on in three, two, one. Uh oh. Oh, well, that was it. That was the last one. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so that was it for our Venn diagram. Uh, you will be uploading it under, or just take a picture and upload it under spider. Oh. Actually, I don't think you need to upload this one. Never mind, scratch that. Uh, we're going to move on to our arachnid exploration, and you will be uploading that one. Okay, so uh, before you get to go explore an arachnid of your choice, I'm going to show you a little video of some cool uh, spiders. I'm not going to show you the whole video. But I will tell you there's a lot of really cool videos on YouTube. If you just put in like cool spiders or amazing spiders, there's some really neat videos that come up. I just don't have time to show you anything too long. So here we go. 10 most amazing spiders. What do you feel when you hear the word spider? A creepy feeling on your back, or the wish not to see any of them in your life. But these striking creatures really deserve your attention, because almost every spider species has astonishing features to let you know about it. So, now I want to show you 10 of the most extraordinary spiders. Let's go! Looking at this gorgeous arachnid, you may just feel sorry that this creature is so small. This tiny cutie is just 0.3 inches long and is about the size of a pencil eraser. Like almost all spiders, peacock spiders are venomous, but they're not dangerous to humans at all. Peacock spiders have very little jaws, and they are so small they can't even bite through our skin. These spiders got their name from the small, bright flaps that the males have on either side of their bodies. They use it for attracting females, but these girls are very picky. To impress them, males have to dance. The dance of each species is unique, but most of them involve sensual leg waving and booty shaking. Peacock spiders don't weave webs to catch prey, as many other spiders do, but use their speed to hunt their very tiny prey. Just mention the black widow spider and you'll likely be greeted with exclamations like what? Where? But this spider species is not so monstrous as the culture pictures it. Though the female black widows do usually eat their male partners after mating, this is the bad news just for the males. And of course, black widows are venomous. The venom is very potent, considered to be about 15 times stronger than that of a rattlesnake. It causes the condition called latrodectism, a very strong muscular cramp that can be very dangerous without medical help, but it's not fatal. Jumping spiders don't impress you with their size, being just about 0.2 inches long but they can do unbelievable things. Jumping spiders are able to jump upwards up to 20 inches in spite of being so small.
If compared to humans, it's like if a person were able to jump 650 feet. To do such crazy things, jumping spiders use principles of fluid mechanics. They collect liquid in their legs, creating overpressure. When they jump, one second outflow creates additional force. Jumping spiders use their superpower for hunting, getting to the prey in a flash. Cyclocosmia is a... Oh, I'm going to show you one more. Introduce you to the spider that has made the largest web in the world. Here it is, the Darwin's Bark Spider. It is a kind of so-called orb weaver spiders that build their webs in circles. Darwin's Bark Spiders live in Madagascar and are famous for their gigantic and extremely tough webs. One of the representatives of this species has released more than 25 meters of continuous strands. And this web is several times stronger than the material called Kevlar, which is a heat-resistant and strong synthetic fiber. Besides, the Darwin's Bark Spider silk is the toughest of any spider. This fact is remarkable indeed, as spider silk is tough anyway and stronger than many artificial substances. And talking about webs, just look at these creepy trees completely covered with spider webs. But this scene is not from a horror movie. It is from Sindh, a Pakistan province that in 2011 suffered greatly from a severe flood. The spiders, as other animals, had to save their lives and went upwards in the trees. There were so many spiders that their webs enveloped the trees completely. Yep, sure looks pretty scary. Hope I managed to change the general point of view about spiders. Please, tell me, did you like any of them? Which ones? Let me know in the comments below. See you! Wow. Uh, so now, you have a chance to explore some different arachnids. You only need to pick one. So I'm going to show you what's on the lesson plan. Okay. So here are some possible arachnids you could explore. A lot of them are books on Get Epic. So Black Widow Spiders, Trapdoor Spiders, Jumping Spiders, Wolf Spiders. This one is a book that that's a read aloud. So if you want something read aloud to you, that's a good choice. We have a YouTube video on peacock spiders, which were the first ones in that video we saw, the tiny little colorful ones. Uh, there's a video on the PBS Learning Media website mm -hmm. uh, for the tarantula. We have another YouTube video for spiny orb weaver. There's another book, a Get Epic book on scorpions. Uh, I tried to pick pretty simple books that aren't very long. And you don't have to read the whole book. Just look for two things that are interesting. Because in your journal, you're going to write two things that you learned. And actually, the books are good for this because you can put the book up on your computer. And then it's easier to copy the things uh, that you find interesting because the words are right there. So that might be a good option for you this time. So in your journal, you will write two things you learned using this fill in the blank, right? I watched a video or I read a book on, and then tell me what kind of arachnid, I wrote what kind of spider, but you know, and you may have chose scorpions, so it's not a spider. And then two things you learned. I learned blank. I also learned blank, okay? And then when you're done writing it, you're going to type it under arachnid exploration. This will be your typing practice for today, so you don't need to go to typing club. And then when you're done, I have something new. Uh, I don't know if you've done Kahoot before. It's a fun quiz site. All you have to do is click the link at the very bottom. Yeah, Isley. Just a minute. All right, sorry about that. So, Kahoot. All you have to do is click on this link. Um, hopefully it's not blocked if you have an LAUSD Chromebook. I know some websites are. 
Um, but give it a try, click the link. And actually I'll add the, the game code too, because if you have to do it from your phone, let's say the website is blocked, uh, you can just go to Kahoot, I think it's Kahoot.com, Kahoot.it. That would be Kahoot.it. And then you would just enter the game pin. So you can do that and I'll add that to the lesson or you can just click the link here. And once you click the link or enter the game pin, you only have to do one, you're gonna enter your name. So I'm Mrs. D, it knows me, it's asking if it's still me. So I'm gonna say yes, that's me. And then it's going to ask a series of questions. Um, they're all the same question, insect or arachnid. So it'll show you a picture and you have to tell me if it's an insect or an arachnid. So this is a wasp. I see it has wings. Uh, right away we know arachnids don't have wings. So it's an insect. Okay, and I will go next. And then it will show me another one. Cricket. I see six legs, so that would be an insect. And then there's 39 questions. You don't have to do all 39. Uh, just, I would say do at least 10. Uh, I will log on on Friday and I'll be able to see all your names, how many you answered, how many you got correct. Uh, and whoever does the most correct, I will leave a little prize on your desk uh, because on June 10th, you're gonna have a chance to come into room 42, pick up all your things. Uh, you can drop off your library books or anything else as well. Um, I'll talk more about that as it gets closer. You'll also have an hour slot on Friday based on the alphabet, but Wednesday, the 10th, you'll have the whole day. So, or well, I think 7.30 to 3.30. So I'll give you more information as that gets closer. But yeah, whoever does the most, I'll, I'll pick something out from prize box to put on your desk as a uh, reward. So that's it for today. Remember just two assignments, uh, your arachnid exploration and the, whatever you made for Miss Rosa. So yeah, I need to start putting something together for her and I really appreciate your help. I know she'll treasure whatever you write to her or draw for her, uh, it'll mean a lot. So yeah, that's all. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. See you tomorrow.